and I as a survivor, uh, I believe that I have the right and the duty to warn and to ask people that never again will be a reality. We're here today because we wanted to bring a group of high-level Canadian dignitaries who are all leaders within their own right to learn and to understand the Holocaust and to understand the tragedy of hate. We wanted to bring home that hate and intolerance can be absolutely devastating and the Holocaust is a showcase of, of the consequences of such actions. And when our door opened, there was a man in a striped jacket and a striped cap, and he was yelling at us, Rausch now, out fast. And there was a doctor who was selecting people for slave labor, and my father and uncle were selected for slave labor. And when I came in front of this doctor, he looked at me and he sent me with my father and uncle. I was 15 years old at the time. The rest of my family, when this selection happened, my mother with my two little brothers, my little sister, my grandparents and my aunt were taken to the gas chambers. And I just kept thinking how hard it was for me to even think of him being there with me now just to see it, let alone the mothers and their, who were trying to save their children when they were in the actual gas chambers together. I just, it's unimaginable really. Just the thought that people could do this to each other. That's the conversation most of us have been having off to the side, is the children arrived here, little kids arrived here, and were separated from their parents and ruthlessly murdered. And, and it really does cause you to question, what kind of people could, could do such a thing to, to children? Nothing prepares you uh, for this. I mean, even on this day when there's a bright sun out there, there's a shadow of death all over this place. We must learn from it, learn from these past mistakes and ensure that it never ever happens again and that the seeds that are planted today, whether it's anti-Semitism, discrimination, Islamophobia, whatever it is, that we stop it in its midst and we just don't allow these seeds to percolate and blossom into another Holocaust. I can't even begin to imagine uh, some of the the fear that went through people when they realized they were in the gas chamber and uh, as families were being separated, as you know, mothers were coming to the realization with their children that uh, they were about to lose their lives. And uh, for what? I just, I, I guess I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Until you actually visit here and see the size and the scope and the sophistication of what went on here. Uh, sophistication in the sense that it was systematic. It was um, obviously very determined to kill as many Jews as they could. I, I think too, I, it, it, it inspires you to to do everything you can to try to eradicate hate. And as we're standing here today, uh, I get an email from back home that somebody had uh, painted Heil Hitler on a, a building in Newmarket. And, and I'm thinking to myself, if the individuals that were responsible for that had three minutes to walk through these, uh, these barracks or three minutes to walk through this camp, you'll come to understand that there's no place in society for this at all. There's absolutely no place for it. While well, walking into this barrack and seeing this many rows and rows and rows of shoes is unbelievably overwhelming. I think it's incredibly important to come and really think about this place as a mass graveyard, a cemetery, and to treat it really respectfully that we are trying to remember all these people. You know, and normally we think that people are killed because they have they've murdered, they've stolen, they've done something, but here you're murdered because you spoke a different language or believed a different thing or looked a different way. And you know this this kind of crime that is unthinkable to, to to face the ultimate death penalty because of that, and that everybody accepted that civilized people accepted that. That is what is so terrifying because if civilized people can accept that, 60, 70 years ago, we know that civilized people could accept it again for anybody. I've read lots of stories. I've I've studied my history. I've I've seen movies, but to be here and to experience it and to see evidence of it. I think that was the most powerful thing for me. I've been crying and I've been trying to pretend that I'm not, but uh, 
yeah, it's been very emotional because um, this looks like the prison I was in. So it's like being there again, so I'm sorry. I think the message from all of this is do something. Do something, but not through creating another cycle of violence. We have to learn from history. This museum is here so that we can see how wrong was done, how horror was born, how Hitler became Hitler. As a teacher, I have definitely changed uh, my approach and how I speak to students in, in encouraging them to raise their voice and showing them that they are privileged in having a voice and being able to make choices with their lives and, and hopefully showing them that they can make a difference. So the message we bring back is that each and every single one of us has to educate ourselves has to learn more about this, has to understand it, and also above all has to understand the full consequences of our acts of either omission or of commission. I'm determined to do this for as long as I can because I feel that a lot of people don't really know or understand what really happened here. So I'm determined to do this so that people will understand and will work towards a goal that we will never allow anything like this happen in our city and in our country, in Canada.